Hi, you guys, and welcome again to Live from the Pastor's Office. Um, we are beginning this journey together. Looking back, uh, for over 90 years, God has blessed Hales Corners Lutheran Church to be a ministry that has made a huge impact upon the world for Christ. And uh, last week we had opportunity to, to visit with our own uh, Pastor Johnson, who has been here with us just a little bit less than half of that entire time. And so we had the opportunity to visit with Pastor Johnson and, and reminisce, uh, reminisce, uh, um, and talk about uh, just a couple of the pastors. We need to talk about some of those guys more so that we make sure that in the archive we honor the way God used those dear brothers in Christ, um, upon whose shoulders I stand. And uh, we talked about Mike, and we talked about um, a couple of the other guys, but we probably need to do a better job with that um, as we go through this. But um, And then next week we will hear from our own Eva Frank, uh, um, who uh, will talk to us about the beginning and the growth stages of the school uh, but today, uh, my own dear brother in Christ, Wayne, uh, has uh, been given the charge of talking about the first 30 years, yes. right? The first 30 years. And um, and so this is a historical this is perspective. True, yeah, historical and perspective. Part of that is because you've been working so hard with others. You've been working so hard yes. with others on the archives that uh, you would get this charge, right? I think that's why, yeah. And so... <laughs> Gotcha. And so the first thing I wanted to do is just be able to talk about those first 30 years and, okay. and uh, I'll let you visit with the folks about, uh, about what that was like, at least as we can look into it from the archives and the history. That's good. That's good. If I can take probably 10 or 15 minutes, um, there are several histories that are available, um, including some in the uh, book that was written on Hills Corners itself, Incorporated. Uh, village. Um, but what I did is I, I have notes covering those histories and how they intermingle. They were generally they all agreed um, on the big big items but there are little snippets that I added in so I've coordinated this. Um, this will all be on and I look at our photographer here um, Joanna that uh, this will all be put on the website eventually in the, under the history section so if people go to hcl.org and go to About, there is a history section. And it, right now, it's quite thorough. Um, but it happens to be one of the histories from a later version, which didn't have several things. So um, we're just the history itself, early 1900s, Hills Corners, uh, which actually got started in the 1830s, was still a very big rural community. All all farmers, mostly all farmers and supporting businesses. Um, where Forest Home and Highway 100 crossed, that was Hales Corners. Um, Janesville Road went from that corner out and um, during that time it was the farmers and most of the farmers had orchards on them. Um, but one of the farmers was Victor Syrup and um, I won't show you a picture of him but uh, um, old pictures never were very yeah, not complimentary, very flattering. not flattering. <laughs> However, um, Victor Syrup uh, was a farmer, and he was born in 1850, I found out through a census, um, and he was actually a milkman, and this was part of his route. He would come and deliver milk, um, and because he got to know the people so well, he would actually use his wagon to take people to church, uh, to school, and then... Sunday school started, and he would pick up the kids from Sunday school, and through the, well, Hills Corners Church itself, uh, it turned out that the, as the Sunday school developed and it was bigger and bigger, Victor Syrup had to go back to his church, which was Leighton Park Lutheran Church, and that's like on 27th, 28th, and uh, Forest Home, roughly, yeah. within a couple blocks. And they no longer are here, but when that church closed, one of our members, Ron Kurtz, uh, picked up from their archives this bell, and, and this allegedly was used by Victor Syrup from his wagon to call the kids to Sunday school, which is really a cute story. You know, I, 
Not that I'm not suggesting you use it every Sunday for the children's message, but <laughs> yeah, it's not a song, many ones. But anyway, so those are the early years. And as he picked up the kids, he also gave them apples. So there's an apple story in there. Um, but then he, um, uh, it got to be so big that he actually asked the pastor, uh, Pastor Olson from Leighton Park, to help him. And then that developed into actually um, a church where they started actually um, the board of Leighton Park decided to start a mission church out of Hales Corners. And that's really the start of it. Do you have um, a date on that? November, November 18th. Um, the mission, uh, November 18th, 1928, was the first worship. In, it was in a vacant building roughly behind where the Hales Corners liquor store is now. Yeah. Um, there's some question about if that's the now, original liquor building. store. Uh, Consumer beverage the, or no? The, uh, the, one, the one over on Forest Home. Okay. Uh, right next. Because we are blessed with many liquor stores. Isn't we it? are very <laughs> blessed, actually. <laughs> the, um, We're over abundantly blessed. That's right. And ironically, the liquor store was started by a man called Irvin Kahn, K-A-U-N, and he was the grandfather or the father to Russell Kahn, who was a uh, primary Russell and Dorothy uh, were primary members, and they, Dorothy still is at 99, um, and Dennis is still a member, and at 64 he's still listed as a child of Dorothy, which is interesting <laughs> about, about our bookkeeping. But <laughs> that's another story anyway. Um, but anyway, so that was 1928, and they were in a, a vacant store building. Uh, now you've got to remember this is November, so it's winter. So they needed heat. Uh, but when March came around, March of 29, came around, the implement store, which is the Ludwig family, um, and that was, a, that was the father to Harold Ludwig, who actually used to roam cattle around in that Blossom Heath uh, neighborhood. But anyway, so 1929, um, they had a move to the Lewis Schultz the greenhouses, which are about where Kmart is now. Yeah. And again, they were Soon in to be a Fiesta. heated. Yes, is that right? I didn't know that. <laughs> Fiesta, that's good. Another store. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so it was in the greenhouses where they had heat. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they needed heat. So they um, they formed the church, and in March of uh, 29, they moved to the greenhouses, and Pastor Harmon was brought on to be uh, the pastor beginning in September of 1929. Uh, and they had 15 communicant members, 23 baptized, and six voting members, which is interesting. There is a Vince, Pastor Vince Harmon, oh. that, uh, that is in the ministry today that talks to me about really? uh, this heritage and... Okay. Uh, and that pastor and uh, his relative and great man of God doing great work. Oh, interesting. Fascinating. Yeah. It is in the blood, I bear. Um, also at this time, in the 20s, um, there were only two other churches in Hills Corners. One was St. Mary's, um, and that had been there since 1840s someplace. Um, and then Emmanuel, which is up on the corner, and they have a daycare now. It's right on that uh, now it's a circle, it used to be a, just the intersection. Um, but that church was um, a, a United Church of Christ. Their pastors were trained Lutheran um, from the Evangelical Lutheran Church, the ELC at that time, I guess it was. Um, but it was all German. And going back a few years, when World War I hit, in 1918, 1919, speaking German became a little less attractive. And they eventually changed over the next years. They morphed into only having one German service in a lot of years. So there was a need, again, for Lutheran worship out in this area. So that, that and, I think... And in English. Created. And in English. Which um, is part of the reason this congregation is an English district yes. congregation in the midst of the South Wisconsin district. Yes. Because of that heritage. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Um, and also in 1929, 
Mr. Copeland, who was part of the church, um, he was a member at the church, he donated three lots to build a church, and that church, those lots are part of where the Grange campus or Lutheran Special Schools is now. There were three lots there. Um, and they decided to build a church. They built the church, and before it was even finished, in December 22nd, 1929, was the first worship in that new building. And just a real quick picture, this was, can you zoom a little bit? I'll try to hold it steady. This is a picture that was created using all of the names. Yeah. Each one of these lines on here is a name of one of the donors yeah. to create the church, which is really sort of cool. And Pastor Camrath was Pastor here Cam at the time. came just after that. And that was in 43, right? That was 1940 he came. But that picture is oh, from 43. This is from 43, yes. Yeah. This is the first building. This is the wood building, the wood frame building. Um, yeah, also, just an interesting note is in 1931 on the um, map of Hills Corners, it showed our church, this building, as the English Evangelical Lutheran Church, mm -hmm. which is interesting. <laughs> you know, we are now Hills Corners Lutheran, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, but in 1932, the street names, the North and South street names, and very, the minor streets, got realigned with the city of Milwaukee, so that's when the numbers came in. Oh, okay. The year after that. So mm -hmm. it was actually, we weren't, we didn't start really on Grange in 110th. We started out on Grange in some yeah, Mayflower or something like that. So um, that that's the real beginning. This church was built without a basement. And um, in 1933, because they were growing, they added... A basement, and so they they had. They um, picked it up and dug a basement they underneath it. They picked it up and dug a basement underneath it, um, and that was a major issue of bringing the children in and having some place to do Sunday school. Yeah. So that was nineteen. What did I say? Nineteen thirty-three. Um, nineteen thirty-six. Pastor Harmon gave way to Pastor Brueggemann for a few years. Uh, nineteen thirty-eight. There were a hundred and 87 communicant members. So they went up from 25 at the beginning, so this is nine years. Uh, they went from 287. Yeah. yeah. In 1938, they built uh, or they bought three more lots in that area and they built an annex which they used as a um, social room and fellowship room and stuff like that. Um, nothing. More was noted in any of the histories until 1940 when Pastor uh, Harmon left to take a call to Oklahoma, uh, Oak, not Oklahoma, Oklahoma Avenue Church, okay. right up on 53rd. Okay. Um, and Pastor Camrath came and he was a very popular pastor for 22 years, I think it was. In 1941, because they had extra room, they added a parsonage and they built that parsonage uh, obviously for the, for the pastor. So is this the house that Wally lived in? Yes. Later on? Later and on. And then they moved the house? And then they moved the house, and it is on Brookside Drive. Uh, Woodside Drive? Brookside. Brookside Drive. Um, just um, north and west of the, yeah. just you know, north and east of the school a little bit. So it's, and you can drive by it and see the, see the building and the garage. And sort of, sort of interesting part of history. Uh, 1947, um, and it's really considered, it's a, they called it a venture of faith, um, and they decided to buy nine more adjoining lots in that subdivision. Uh, so now it formed what is now two blocks by two blocks, effectively, and all the lots in there, Hales Corners Lutheran Church, um, except on the road. Those were not ours, right at Long Range. Those, yeah. They stayed separate. And they decided to make a plan to have a more permanent church, and that they called it the Land and Stone Church, and that was the plan. Um, they completed what is, this completed what is now Lutheran uh, Special Schools property. 
Um, interesting. It, isn't it really cool? I, I oh, think it, I think it's got God's hand written all over it. That uh, just like the entire history of the church has God's hand written all Clearly. over it. Yeah. This idea of selling the Grange campus and then moving everybody together over here. Um, that Lutheran Special School would be yes. uh, the beneficiaries of that, was a hand of that. Uh, handpicked by God opportunity, yep. and we rejoice that they are in there. Yeah, yeah and they're wonderful. And, we, and now, ironically, we have our archives over in the yeah, building. We do. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fascinating. And thank you, you guys. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, interesting note uh, 1948 in July. Uh, they hired a new music director, and that was Hibbs' mom. Yeah, yeah. And it's cute because every place I looked, every record I looked, it was Mrs. H. Wiedenkiller. Mrs. H. Wiedenkiller. No place did it show her first name. Uh -huh. Except on the back of a picture we have of the choir, and it was Antoinette. 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 Um, and apparently Hibbs said she was called Tony in high school, or in college. <laughs> Other note is they added the music director, and on October 2nd, 1949, was the first time they offered two services because they needed them. So yeah. that's the progression of yeah. attendance. No numbers are... Now we have eight. Now we have eight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know. And you do seven or eight? No. <laughs> Most of them either. We have only this one. Uh, 1951, they broke ground and they started that new church. Um, it was dedicated in 1953 on February 1st, and I just want to read you what it says in here, which is really sweet. It says, um, a new $250,000 church erected to the glory of God through the generosity of its members was dedicated on Sunday, for February 1st, 1953. After brief farewell devotions in the old church, the members marched in solemn procession to the new church to worship the, worship the Lord in prayer, word, and song for the great things he had done for them. Isn't that sweet? That is. It's, it's, just, it's just got a real nice... I'm also caught by the price tag. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right? Yes. That is, that's very true because they made a point in the history that it didn't take too long for that debt to be paid off. Yeah which is cool. So that was the, the move. Um, in December, December 6, 1957, now we just made a, a four-year jump, um, a professor from Concordia was installed as a part-time pastoral assistant. And he did it for about six years. And that was the beginning of three Sunday morning services. So mm -hmm. we're progressing um, along. Then 1959, um, is benchmark time when there was a committee formed to study the possible um, parish school. Um, St. Mary's from the history is in 1954, they started their school. So there's just God working through yeah. the whole community, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and then in September 1960, classes began in the church building with 56 pupils. Um, Robert Eggold. Um, and the Eggold family is really now Menominee Falls Church. Right. Uh, um, Robert Eggold uh, is, uh, is a friend of mine. Oh, cool. Um, really? So Paul okay. Eggold, you know that name? The young one, yes. Yeah, the young one. Yes. Uh, he was young at that time. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. Paul Eggold, um, I followed Paul Eggold in both of us had our first parishes in Iowa District East. Oh, that's a different um, angle. Okay. Sorry, uh, and and cool. he, uh, and so he was a part of that family. And uh, we, uh, Luzerne, Iowa. Okay. St. Paul Lutheran Church in Luzerne, Iowa. Cool. Um, uh, Pastor Eggold was uh, dearly loved by them, too. I think he's part of this family. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, so... Um, there was not too much talked about of um, building the school building itself, but in um, 1961 in October, um, the uh, school was dedicated. Mm -hmm. So um, they had, um, the Sunday school at that time had 506 children from four years up, um, and then also a staff of 64 people. Yeah. And that's where I've turned it over to Eva, who really knows the schools. Yeah, yeah. And you know, she, that's exciting. Yeah, and she, uh, 
She'll do a great job of uh, talking about Betty Soderman. And, oh my goodness, yes. And uh, talking about uh, Raleigh Sandstrom and talking about uh, uh, it just folks goes, like that. It just goes and, on and, and on, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I heard um, Pastor Principal Johnson. Principal Caston. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Pastor Johnson mentioned last year that, um, uh, last year, I'm sorry, last week um, during your talk with Pastor Johnson, um, he talked about um, Sylvia being a teacher and she taught my children. So there's a connection. And that, so how long have you guys been here? Well, uh, we, we joined in 85, so whatever that is, 30 some years. Um, and ironically, it came through God's hand again. We, um, we adopted a young lady, a little girl out of, out of um, Korea. Mm -hmm. And Elizabeth came to us at three and a half, so she was partially speaking Korean and no English. And by the time she got, and we were members at our shepherd at the time. I was um, involved, in, but anyway. Yeah. Um, great ministry. That's a wonderful ministry. And that yeah. was uh, that was uh, Paul Schrader, of course. Um, but when she was baptized over there, when we came to Elizabeth being five years old and ready for kindergarten, the public schools all had full day king kindergarten, and Hales Corners had half day kindergarten and we felt that a half day would be better for somebody we didn't know whether how well she spoke anyway. So, um, so we looked here and then we decided to enroll her here and the two other girls, Mary and Susie, who were in fifth and second grade at the fifth and third grade at the time. Um, said they weren't going to be at a different school than Elizabeth, so we just... <laughs> here we are. And here we are. <laughs> so so, so was, what are the different roles thing. you played during the time that you've been here? Um, honestly, I was um, uh, part of the church. Um, I spent a lot of time volunteering both at Martin Luther High School with my kids mm -hmm. um, and coaching here with the schools. Mm -hmm. uh, so I coached a lot with the schools. Um, coach Bust. What did you coach? Basketball. Girls Mainly basketball. basketball. Girls basketball <laughs> and softball. Girls, uh -huh. what a surprise. <laughs> and um, Suzanne first, and then Mary, and then Elizabeth. And uh, enjoyed those years greatly. Um, and still enjoy all of our years, of course. But um, it, was a, it was a time when, as the, the high school kids started in Martin Luther, they needed volunteer help and so I volunteered a lot at Hills Court at the Martin Luther. So you worked a lot with Gene Schneider and, and, and um, those guys? No, it was mainly through um, uh, Eisman. Uh, oh, okay. And Carl? Uh, Carl Eisman yeah, and right. I and uh, um, then I was very deeply involved in the ML club and um, so during those years, it was mostly volunteering at the high school. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the 90s, uh, mid-90s, I was an elder at Hills Corners. So I was doing that, and they worship it because of the elder. And the elders were the only ones that served at the time. Um, so then when we built the new church in 97, I took over the communion assistants, or the lay worship people, and created that function yeah. uh, because yeah. now we're going from two people serving to seven people serving you know yeah. and we needed a lot of volunteers so and then pastor Mike some years later uh, in 2004 asked me to join staff and so I came on board as um, Armin Malaki's replacement uh, it was not easy to replace him. He was yeah. so deeply involved and so good at what he did with spiritual gifts and assimilation. So I began doing that role, and in order to give me a full-time job, um, I was athletic director for the first year go. and a half. So, there you go. so uh, a lot of things happened. And then um, it just morphed into lots of different roles, and I still continued the, um, still continued the lay worship stuff. And Sandy and I, at the turn of the year, about 1998, through Pastor Thielen, started mm -hmm. the marriage mentoring program, which is still going. Still going. Uh, yeah. 
and that's that was a wonderful blessing to be involved with that and with all the people and train the people and still do so. Um, yeah. And then in whatever it was, not because you came, but <laughs> when you came, I went to part time. Yeah. You know, just about that same time. So. One of the first conversations you and I had together, you started using this phrase, uh, I don't want so many time stamps in my life. Yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> I did, say, did I say that? Yes, you did. Uh, now yes, I have did. nine grandchildren living within three miles, and our yeah. Google calendar has got so many stamps on it. <laughs> so there's, there's no yeah. departing from but that. But that's a whole different that's, kind of time oh stamp. Though, what right? a blessing that is. Yeah. 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 But I am blessed, and we have been so blessed by this church. Um, in numerous ways, you know, through through volunteer, through working time, and all that stuff. And one daughter's teaching here, another one's subbing here, another one, you know. So it's good. You have it's seen. Um, you have seen from the inside as much or more than anybody else the things that the Holy Spirit used to bring about growth um, for the sake of the kingdom, for the sake of. Yeah. Just more people believing in Jesus and more people coming along uh, for the way. So, what would be the things that you would identify along the way that caused exponential growth? Um, I think I, I would say several things. Um, just a new building attracted, attracted and got attention, certainly. Um, during those years, we never there was never any advertisement. There was no other than word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, a second thing that occurred also is it was a period of trouble for the Catholic Church. Um, they had some issues they had to resolve, and uh, whether or not they got resolved or not, many people from the Catholic faith chose to worship with us. Uh, we I say to people changed. when they ask me all the time, one of the reasons that this church grew to what it's grown to is because of the word alternative. Yes, um, that's a good word. Giving people a new home from places where they had some pain or some mm -hmm. scar yep. tissue. Pain, and scar it wasn't just a Catholic church. There were also LCMS yeah. churches around us. I believe that. Um, other kinds of things. Uh, but, uh, you know, I... I, uh, I I love our brothers and sisters in Christ in the Catholic Church, and I, I give thanks to God for them, and we've all got stuff. Yes. Um, but undoubtedly, one of the reasons why this congregation grew to what it grew to is because of people trying to find a new yep. home, either because they had pain or because there was uh, one member grew up Catholic and the other grew up something Absolutely. else, and they were trying to find something to come together around. Yes. Right? Um, so, yeah. Well, and, it, and it's interesting, even the, the Catholic faith, or the religion itself, changed over the years. In the 50s, when I lived five miles from here, and we were building up, going from a one-room school to a four-room school, we had a, a ten school in the basement of the church, and the Catholic children had to get special dispensation to go to that school. Mm -hmm. Because it was the basement of a Lutheran church. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, it's not clearly mandated so strongly that sure. other way. You know, sure. that had a factor. So things are morphing, and that's not necessarily good or bad. But are we becoming so desensitized to life that that our faith is becoming just a, another club to be part of? You know, yeah. and yeah. we obviously we discuss this all the time. That's you know? right. That's right. But so what else would you point to um, in terms of growth? I, I, a lot of people will, here's, here's what a lot of people say to me. A lot of people say to me that, um, that the school, uh, school is a huge uh, catalyst for growth still today. Yes, um, yes it is. Uh, over time, I have other people say our worship life. Um, especially style. our musical life, the worship um, style. Yes, our worship style and and uh, preaching and music and those kinds of things are things that have grown, have attracted people over time. And uh, and, and this word alternative, um, I rejoice now that uh, there are people who come to us uh, because of the word mission. Um, yeah, and That's I give nice. thanks to God for that. Not that they weren't doing that all along, but. Uh, 
there have been uh, prayerful, special emphasis placed upon that now, and we yep. see some of that fruit. But uh, so, what else? Is there anything else? Staff, staff had yeah. certainly. You have to always point to staff. Right. Um, but it was an overall feeling of just welcoming. You know, mm -hmm. when people were starting to come in and there were bigger numbers. Um, I was very involved, obviously, with the new members and Armin the same way. Um, it was probably plateauing a little bit when Armin retired and I took over. Uh, it stayed pretty high for, uh, I came in on 2004. It wasn't until probably 2007 that we really saw the declining. Mm -hmm. Um, and you think about what was going on nationally around 2007, 2008. And everything, and yeah. that's also a time at which our very popular pastor was starting to talk about retiring in a few years. That has an issue. Um, there's always the question as to what's going to happen. And, you know, I think that was part of the decline. But the staff and the welcoming attitude that was you know, um, just emulated by all the volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, this was a friendly place to come and worship. Yeah. And you left here not feeling guilt-ridden because you were so fire and brimstone on that far, yeah. far law, law side. But um, I mean, it was a lot of grace. And yeah. did we did we do enough? Because I know as a staff we always talked about, you know, we. Lower the threshold, and we want everybody to come. How do we raise the bar when you right. do that? You know, and we're working on that. Yeah, and that's a good thing. Yeah, we're so, very, we're very blessed to be yes. uh, where we are now, and uh, and giving thanks to God for continued growth. Absolutely, you know, we rejoice in all of those things yes. as well. Well, thank you, brother. We this love you, and we give thanks to God for you blessed. and the family and the way you've served the Lord and yeah. His church I'm in this place with all these years. A wonderful wife and. There you go. I Just asked, like me, you married a... I asked Sandy woman. this morning. She <laughs> says, wouldn't it be nice to go back to the 30s or 20s wow. and see what went like that? And she says, yeah, if I could have disposable diapers. <laughs> 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 Which is a great line. But, uh, anyway, thank you for the time. All right. Appreciate it. All right. Have a great rest of your week.